Arirang Prime. War is killing people and destroying things. Doesn't necessarily mean other soldiers. Civilians get killed too. At that time, the, during the war, the Korean society there was a, a, like a hell. No food, no house, no clothes. Men følte man virkelig gjorde noget. Havde godt positivt i krigen, som var meningsløst. On the 23rd of January 1951, the hospital ship Jutlandia departs from Langelinia Key in Copenhagen, where more than 10,000 people have turned up to send off doctors and nurses. The mission is to treat the many wounded UN soldiers fighting in the Korean War. The war broke out seven months ago, and the Allied forces are under massive pressure with consequential great losses. The entire country suffers death and destruction, and the civilians are suffering. Korea is in dire need of help. This is the first time Denmark participates in a UN operation, and the country's reputation depends on a successful mission for the Jutlandia. The neurosurgeon, professor and chief surgeon Edward Bush is among the selected for the expedition. Bush is one of the leading experts in his field and his work has already achieved great international recognition. A few months earlier, Kai Hammerich has been appointed chief of the expedition. He is now Jutlandia's official public image and has the overall responsibility for everybody on board the hospital ship. The entire medical crew is recruited by the Red Cross, which receives an overwhelming response on the job adverts for the manning of Jutlandia. Red Cross puts great emphasis on a profound, professional and personal energy level, as the mission is expected to become a very tough experience. There were thousands of sickness that were sent to the German occupation of Denmark, so we knew well Øh, hvad det betød, når et lille land bliver besat af, af en diktaturstat. Og det tror jeg gik igen i mange, mange af de mennesker, der meldte sig. Prior to the departure, the chief of the expedition, Kai Hammerich, delivers a farewell speech to everyone present. During the occupation, we felt we were all in the same situation, with a great common purpose, turned our dangerous daily life into something of a celebration. We also promised each other that on this expedition, we'd do our best to serve Denmark and the United Nations. However, the Danish press is highly critical of Jutlandia's mission, which, from the very beginning, is predicted a dubious fate. Medierne, aviserne, de var jo lynhurtige, da jo land der skulle sejle, øh, til at sige, at det var fuldstændig opsondt for skibet. Det var sikkert sunket, inden den kom igennem Middelhavet. For med øh, et par professorer og en tre fire overlæger og en, en, en kommandør, der var ekspeditionschef og en kaptajn, der var skibschef, så var, det, så var de simpelthen kommet op og slås alle sammen, inden der var gået ret lang tid. However, reality does not turn out as the press predicts. From the very first day, a unique bond develops between the people on board. Especially the nurses become very close and get to know each other very well on the long voyage to Korea. 
But at the same time, a journey towards the unknown has begun for the crew, who is oblivious to the challenges they will soon be facing. After the Second World War, the world has been divided into an Eastern and a Western bloc. Korea has been divided, but the North Korean rebel leader Kim Il-sung wants to reunify Korea under one communist regime. Early in the morning on Sunday, the 25th of June, 1950, the North Korean army storms the border in a perfect surprise attack. In one day, about 135,000 North Korean soldiers invade South Korea and wipe out a greater part of the South Korean army. The North Korean attack is the first armed confrontation in the Cold War conflict and sends shockwaves around the entire world. Whose territory is overrun by an invading army? The Republic of Korea's. Who is assisting the Republic of Korea to defend itself? The United Nations. Even though the Korean War is formally a civil war, everybody realizes that in reality, this is a conflict between the two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. It is only five years since the peace agreements were concluded during the Second World War. Many people therefore fear a new world war and all eyes are on the Korean Peninsula. Will there be peace or war? Shortly after the invasion of South Korea, the United States summons the United Nations Security Council, which immediately condemns the war. However, the Security Council is also affected by the Cold War conflict. The Soviet Union has imposed a boycott on the Security Council because of the non-representation of China. The Soviet Union is therefore unable to veto UN's decision Consequently, the operations in Korea are to be conducted by the United States and the other UN member countries are immediately contacted to find out how they can contribute. This means that Denmark, as a new member of the UN, must also take a stand on the country's participation in the war. Denmark is very happy with that FN griber in over for its small state that is angrebed, but on the other side, er man også skeptisk, fordi det er FN, der griber ind, og Danmark er blevet medlem af FN fem år forinden, og øhm, skal derfor tage stilling til konflikten og potentielt deltage i den militære operation, som bliver etableret i, i den forbindelse. Så det er med, en, med blandede følelser, man reagerer på, på Koreakrigen. While the ravages of the war continue in Korea, Denmark receives a request from the UN for participation in the war. However, the Danish armed forces were in a miserable state after the Second World War, and instead Denmark decides to provide humanitarian assistance. But which kind of humanitarian contribution Denmark should provide is a difficult matter. It takes a time for Denmark to decide to participate in the FN's military operation in Korea, fordi den kolde krig så at sige, er flyttet med ind i FN, fordi Sovjet er skeptisk over for FN-operationen. På den anden side er man også skeptisk over for at være med, fordi at man ikke vil involvere sig militært i en operation, som er lidt anden af USA. After some consideration, Denmark decides to send medicine to Korea. The UN considers this offer inadequate and rejects it completely. The Danish offer is even mocked in the press when it turns out that a lot of the medicine has surpassed its expiry date. However, the Danish government quickly comes up with a new offer, an ambulance squad of 13 vehicles, but this offer is also rejected. The, the, the Danish government knows that yet another rejection from the UN will send an unacceptable signal and therefore starts preparing a third proposal. Many American families are deeply affected by the conflict. Only five years after the end of the Second World War, they once again have to send their sons to war in a foreign country far away. 
One of the American soldiers going to Korea is Richard Sheridan. Sheridan is only 23 years old and is going to serve in the US Marines. He doesn't know what to expect and he leaves with mixed emotions. A nightmare meets the first American soldiers arriving in Korea. The ravages of the war have razed entire villages to the ground. North Korea has captured almost all of South Korea and the front is positioned all the way down to the seaport, Pusan. The American soldiers are under a lot of pressure from the very first day in the foreign country. The North Korean soldiers are everywhere and the Americans are constantly engaged in heavy gun battles. Everyone knows that the small area around Pusan is a strategically important bridgehead for supplies and everyone fights hard to keep the front. Their mission was to delay the enemy as long as they could. In other words, meet them as far north as you go and delay them. Blow out bridges, fight them on every hill, move back when you had to move back, but delay them. Fight a complete delaying action so that uh, to give MacArthur and the commanders sufficient time to build up the forces in the Pusan area. However, not only the soldiers feel the fierce advances by the North Koreans, the raging war sends massive crowds on the run and thousands die. Among the many civilian refugees are young Kim Joo Hwan and his father, who normally live in North Korea. The horrors of the war forced them to flee to the south, leaving behind his younger sister and his grandmother, who is too old to flee. My father uh, felt uh, so sorry to leave the, an old, old the woman uh, uh, alone there. And uh, uh, he uh, left the little girl to the, uh, be a friend of her. Kim Joo Wan and his father make it across the border to the south, but it is difficult to make a home in the completely destroyed villages. It was so miserable and so difficult to survive in South Korea because we had no relatives and no house, no money. While the civilian misery grows, the UN convinces more countries to take part in the operations in Korea. I do know that there were people living in the mountains. And what they would do is dig out a cave into the side of the mountain, large enough to where they could crawl into, and that was their, their shelter. And these, these were civilians who were trying to survive while the civilian misery grows, the UN convinces more countries to take part in the operations in Korea. As the first European country, Sweden provides humanitarian assistance. They set up a field hospital in Korea, in Pusan, where more than 1,000 Swedish doctors and nurses serve. However, Denmark has still not made an acceptable contribution to the UN operations, and Denmark's involvement in the war is beginning to seem dubious. As the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Gustav Rasmussen, states, we must find a solution which is not all negative. The Ministry for Foreign Affairs immediately initiates the serious negotiations to find a third proposition. The outcome is a humanitarian contribution in the form of a hospital ship, which is to be part of the military UN unit. A controversial solution which the Allies accept reluctantly. Kai Hammerich, the former president of the Danish Red Cross, is asked to find a suitable ship. Hammerich contacts the East Asiatic company, EAC, which at the time owns the largest fleet in Denmark, 
EAC immediately suggests the cargo vessel and passenger ship MS Jutlandia. When the Danish government came to ÖK and asked if they had a ship that could convert us to a hospital ship and participate in the war in Korea, it was completely in ÖK's hand to help if they could. Jutlandia is immediately removed from her ordinary route and sailed to the shipyard in Naxco, where a major restructuring is carried out. The ship is fitted with three operating rooms, one for thoracic surgery, one for neurosurgery and one for general surgery. The hospital beds are made as two-layer swing berths with a capacity of a total of 360 berths. The hull is kept in white, while a big and distinctive red cross is painted on the side. It must be evident that Jutlandia is not a military ship, but a civilian hospital ship. When Jutlandia is finally rebuilt, she is a beautiful hospital ship with the latest hospital facilities. For UK's ledelse was it forholdsvis clear that Jutlandia would be very unique to a certain task, because of the special appearing, special luxurious appearing, I would say, and the very large lift room that could be easily made to the operation stores and the hospital. The war is still raging in Korea. The UN troops are forced all the way down to the Pusan area, and the tactics must obviously be changed to resist the North Korean forces. The American general, Douglas MacArthur, therefore makes a bold suggestion. He wants to make a risky landing of troops in the seaport Incheon, close to the South Korean capital, Seoul. On the 15th of September, 1950, 75,000 UN soldiers make landfall by Incheon in a major counterattack. After MacArthur's successful counterattack, the front is well positioned around the 38th parallel. This was also the border for the original division between North and South in 1945. Jutlandia has now been on the move for several weeks. The crew knows each other well now and enjoys each other's company under warm skies. For entertainment, the crew comes up with imaginative ideas on the narrow ship deck. Professors, doctors and nurses participate on equal terms. Whether man was Professor Bush or was man told, so was man dus. Then there was a, as I remember, a praiseworthy work distribution. En fornem administration og ingen skænderier. Ingen præstis pjat. As Jutlandia approaches Korea, the crew becomes increasingly focused on and excited about the serious job ahead. Surgical instruments and medical supplies are unpacked and organized, and everything is rechecked. When hearing real war accounts, the crew gets increasingly anxious thinking about the encounter with the war. While Jutlandia is on the way, China decides to support North Korea by bringing almost 900,000 troops into action against the UN troops. With the help from China, the North Korean forces recapture Seoul and the American troops are retreating with great losses and countless casualties. Gradually, the front settles around the 38th parallel, but the fierce gun battles continue. There was uh, a lot of killing, a lot of casualties, because each side was in defensive positions, and each side wanted to send out patrols, and they would send them out in no man's land between the two positions.
The cruelty of the war and the loss of comrades are part of the soldiers' harsh reality, and the constant psychological pressure is difficult to handle for a lot of them. The hospital ship Jutlandia's arrival at the seaport Pusan in Korea was eagerly anticipated. President Sung Mang Ri inspected Jutlandia, which received the first patients not many hours later. On the 10th of March 1951, Jutlandia finally calls into port at Pusan. The arrival of the ship is eagerly anticipated and the crew starts working immediately. Commander Hammerish states in his report, Already the day after arrival, the first 150 patients arrived aboard an ambulance train from the front line. And accordingly, the ship was full after just a short time. One of the first patients on board Jutlandia is the American Marine soldier, Charles. He has a serious gunshot wound in his leg and is immediately operated. After a successful operation, he recovers quickly and is in good spirits. Charles is pleased to be a patient on a Danish ship and he is especially happy about being treated by Danish nurses. In fact, he appreciates it so much that he asks about the name of one of the nurses and he also wants to learn how to say good morning, sweetheart, in Danish. For you, Lantia. Der var det jo sygeplejerskerne, der kom hen og hyggede eller nussede om, om, om patienterne i det omfang, de nu kunne, og der var tid til det. Det var dem, der eh, ind imellem tog en, en, en spand og en kost og, og gjorde rent rundt omkring. De skiftede øh, sengetøj hos dem, der havde blødt og på anden måde. Der var en utrolig nærkontakt imellem øh, patienterne og så sygeplejerskerne. When Charles, after some time, has recovered, he says, When I return to the front, I want to have it written on my dog tags that if I get wounded, I would like to be sent to Jutlandia again. As the war develops, the conditions become increasingly difficult for the crew on board Jutlandia, who, to an increasing extent, see the horrors of the war. Jutlandia is swamped with wounded soldiers and the entire hospital ship is put to use. The crew now witnesses the seriousness of the war at close range and the reality is a great shock to many. The nurses are under heavy pressure. They have worked non-stop for several hours, and not everyone handles the harsh realities of the war well. It was a hard time when we were in the front. Der var ikke nogen hverken 11 timers regel eller 8 timers arbejdsdag. Det var, hvis, hvis det gik hårdt på, så opererede lægerne i op til 24 timer. Uh, ofte så meget, så de godt vidste, at det var, på, uh, det var på grænsen af det forsvarlige. With the increased number of wounded patients, the crew comes to realize the horrible reality of the war. Therefore, the crew at Jutlandia has to support each other when the psychological pressure and fatigue take over. It's now several months since Kim Ju-wan and his father fled to Incheon, close to Seoul. 
It's difficult to find shelter and food, but what pains Kim Ju Wan the most is a separation from his younger sister. It is no longer possible to go back to get her. The war zone along the 38th parallel separates them. She uh, said, uh, don't forget me. Uh, uh, no matter uh, everywhere that you go, I still uh, remember her voice. A uh, voice uh, weeping uh, and uh, in tears, uh, uh, she said that uh, my brother, my father, uh, please don't forget me. It makes it, uh, me uh, cry uh, until now uh, when I uh, recall uh, it. Kim Joo Wan keeps hearing his sister's words and cries, and he is in despair that he cannot keep his promise to get her. Sadly, he is just one of thousands of families separated because of the war. After some time, the intensity of the war wears off, and negotiations about a ceasefire are initiated. Wounded soldiers from the southern part of the peninsula are now a rare occurrence, which means that the ship is practically empty. Doctors and nurses feel superfluous. They want to help, but only a small number of wounded are brought to Jutlandia. Utrolig svært for det danske personale at, at se på den her nød og elendighed, der var i Busan, ikke mindst. Og så samtidig i perioder ombord gå rundt og ikke have noget synderligt meningsfuldt at give sig til. The entire country is affected by the violent ravages of the war and is in ruins after the fierce fighting. Now the front is stable again around the 38th parallel and Korea is yet again divided into north and south. However, the refugee crowds keep coming to the south. I byen Busan, hvor vi lå, der kom jo uh, flygtninge i 10.000 vis. Og det er dem vi også har i dag derude, der er kommet nordfra, uh, som skulle finde steder at være. Og det var selvfølgelig under aluminiumstage og, og paptage og hvad det var. While the conditions for the civilians ashore are deteriorating, the crew on board Jutlandia are getting restless and frustrated as they feel their presence in Korea is not being utilized fully. But Jutlandia's mission is strictly to help UN soldiers and not the civilians, even though the civilians are in dire need of help. Det at det så var et civilt baseret humanitært bidrag eller et civilt hospitalskib, det gjorde at at de civile læger og sygeplejersker som var ombord, de de ville gerne gøre en forskel. Det var det vi var taget ud for, og når de ikke kunne gøre en forskel i FN sammenhæng, så ville de gerne gøre en forskel i forhold til den nød og elendighed, som de så i det helt almindelige Korea. Doctors and nurses therefore go ashore to help with the treatment of civilians in the primitive hospitals in the area. Particularly, Chief Surgeon Bush works extremely hard at the hospitals ashore, and he spends all his spare time helping sick and wounded. However, the conditions ashore are poor, and it is difficult to help the civilians. De var jo i en elendig tilstand, og specielt øh, børnene for... Ja, mange af børnene var jo øh, for det første forældreløse, så der var ingen, og der var ingen, der havde så meget til overs, så de kunne tage sig af børnene. Mange af dem var jo på nippet til at og, 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 og dø af sult. One day, Chief Surgeon Bush sees a child with a serious head injury, and he quickly realizes that he can only save the child with the equipment available at Jutlandia. Professor Bush therefore decides to take the child on board. Det vi oplevede i forbindelse med Bush, det var en uh, kærlighed, 
til medmennesket, som jeg var optaget af, at man tog sig også af de civile. Og det tror jeg er smittet. At first, everybody is shocked at Professor Bush's decision. There is a direct order from the UN saying that the hospital ships are only for wounded UN soldiers. Even Commander Hammerish is astonished at the controversial decision and must now decide whether or not he wants to fight UN's rules. FN's hovedregel for hospitalsenheders virke i det militære setup i Korea, det var at de skulle behandle syresårede FN-soldater, og ikke andet end det. However, the crew of the Danish ship is of a different opinion. They believe that Jutlandia can and should help the civilian patients, instead of just standing empty. Hammerish writes in his report, As Jutlandia occasionally utilized just a third of its capacity or even less, there was an understandable desire on board to open the ship up to Korean civilians as well. However, negotiations regarding this matter proved to be difficult. Min farfar havde det rigtig dårligt med det faktum, at man ikke øh, havde lov til at behandle civile ombord på skibet. Alt den stund, at man havde kapacitet til det. Vi snakker igen om den her mand, som både er en militærmand og en øh, humanitær person. Jeg vil sige, hvis der ikke havde været plads, hvis der havde været nok øh, soldater, så at sige, der var såret, så tror jeg, at han ville have prioriteret soldaterne. Men alt den stund, at der var kapacitet, øh, er det klart, det ville, jeg tror, det ville irritere ham helt grusomt, fordi det netop var... Hammerish immediately prepares a plan and contacts the UN command with a request for permission to treat civilians on board. Kai Hammerichs forspørgsler til FN om at få lov at behandle civile koreanere, de blev jo øh, ikke de sidder afvist, men der blev sat spørgsmålstegn ved dem, og, og der blev sat spørgsmålstegn ved, hvorfor i land det er skulle afvige fra FN's hovedregel om at at militære hospitalskibe, de skulle tage sig af syre så over FN's soldater. The crew at Jutlandia is aware that there is a huge need for treatment of the civilians, and they assist the best they can by treating people ashore. Many children are all alone. Typically they have lost both their parents and must take care of themselves. Most of them are not only undernourished, but also wounded, fighting to survive in the devastated country. Hammerish knows that many more lives can be saved if the civilians are brought to the modern hospital rooms on board, instead of treating them ashore. Therefore, he intensifies his efforts to acquire permission to treat civilians on board Jutlandia. After months of intense negotiations, Hammerish's efforts finally bear fruit. Resultatet af Karl Hammerichs forhandlinger blev for det første, at han fik øh, lov til i en prøveperiode at tage civile koreanere om bord på Jutlandia. Øhm, og hvor USA jo så drog den erfaring, at det fungerede fint nok, og prøveperioden egentlig blev gjort permanent, hvis man kan sige det sådan. The crew quickly fills big parts of the ship with civilians, and especially children fill up the rooms. Even a pediatrics unit is set up in the officer's room. Jutlandia's efforts are soon noticed by the Danish press, as well as the foreign media and the hospital ship now achieves great international recognition. Jutlandia's mission has now lasted almost two years. The war is still raging around the 38th parallel and still a lot of wounded need treatment. It is therefore decided to equip Jutlandia with a helicopter deck and sail her to Incheon, only a few kilometers from the war front. As the ship approaches her position near the front, the crew can follow the battle ashore. 
The destructions are enormous and far worse than what the crew witnessed by Poussin. It is a completely new situation for the crew to be this close to the actual war, and a lot of them feel insecure. Hvis vi så helt glemt og sådan noget derop, så var vi klar over, nu var der altså en eller anden øh, krigshandling i gang. Og det var nok til, at så kunne de øh, allerede mobilisere øh, læger og sygeplejersker, så de stod klar på operationsstuerne. For vi vidste, at nu går der altså øh, en halv time, måske eller tre kvarter, så mylder de første sårede ind. With the new helicopter deck, it only takes about 20 minutes to bring the wounded from the front to Jutlandia to be treated. Now the cases are far more difficult to treat than the cases at Poussin, as the wounded have not been pre-treated. Commander Hammerish says... By the end of March, the hospital ship had received 169 patients within three and a half days. Of these, 81 arrived seriously injured by helicopter, which was the maximum limit for what a hospital ship of Jutlandia's size and resources could handle. Because the soldiers are brought directly from the firefight, a lot of them are near death because of their serious injuries. De vil mere hårdt sårede, og en gang mellem, når man fik flere, de lyder sådan lidt groteske. Jeg var på arme og ben, man ikke rigtig vidste, hvor de hørte til. The new position of the ship close to the fighting zone is not without danger. One night, the Chinese had announced a bombing raid at Incheon. Plutselig så hørte vi den kom. De har blivet ramt, eller hvad? Men den fløj meget tæt over. Og så en... Den bombede oljetankerne i Inchen og vi lå derude på vandet fuldstændig oplyst. De kunne have ramt os. In spite of the danger of being so close to the front, there is an obvious need for the presence of the hospital ship. The battles around the 38th parallel are severe with consequential heavy casualties. The soldiers feel that the battles are meaningless and also that the political will is not present to start a new major attack. Throughout the entire wartime, the front has actually only moved a few kilometers north. Richard Sheridan has now been part of the war for almost two years. The rough terrain and the lack of progress of the war wear out the soldiers and most of them are tired and exhausted. One morning, Sheridan almost loses his life trying to capture yet another ridge. The other soldiers help Sheridan, who is immediately flown to Jutlandia by helicopter. It is obvious that he needs extensive surgery to survive, and he is immediately operated. Even though he's in a critical condition, the doctors manage to stop the bleeding and after a lengthy surgery, his condition is stable again. In the following weeks, Sheridan stays at Jutlandia, slowly recovering. Richard Sheridan settles in well on board and enjoys the company of the nurses. Even though Jutlandia's position close to the front means that there is less time to help the civilians, the crew still goes ashore to assist when there is a lull in the battles. Kim Ju Wan has now been a refugee together with his father for almost two years. One day he's met with a serious accident. My left leg uh, was uh, one over the, by a uh, wheel uh, of the 
the uh, train. Kim Ju Wan is found by crew members from Jutlandia, among these a Danish male nurse, Johan Frisk. Kim is nearly dying, but after stopping the bleeding, he's quickly removed from the tracks. My uh, uh, leg uh, was uh, completely uh, cut, uh, spouting uh, uh, blood uh, profusely. It is obvious that Kim Ju Wan has lost a lot of blood and seriously needs a blood transfusion. Johann Frisk therefore takes drastic action. He instantly decides to donate his own blood, drawing it directly into Kim. Then they can only hope that the blood type matches. If not, Kim Ju Wan will die for sure. Luckily, it turns out that Kim's body accepts the blood from Johann Frisk, slowly improving and finally regaining consciousness. I still remember the, uh, his voice, that, uh, you, you may be the all right, uh, you may be the survivor, uh, you may be the alive, uh, you have the, no reason to, to uh, worry uh, about uh, your uh, uh, life. Uh, I uh, feel that uh, his uh, blood is uh, still uh, uh, circulating around uh, my vein. After the acute treatment ashore, the doctors bring Kim on board Jutlandia. Everybody has heard about his violent accident and therefore gives him extra care and attention, and Kim settles in well with the Danish crew. Especially Johan Frisk and Kim Ju Wan get very close and they spend a lot of time together. She was uh, so kind uh, and I uh, usually uh, say the people uh, around me, uh, I have the two fathers, the um, a biological father and the, uh, a mental father. On the 27th of July, 1953, after three years of fierce war and millions of casualties, a truce is finally agreed between North Korea and South Korea. Jutlandia is therefore recalled, and the crew members slowly prepare themselves for the long voyage. This means that the crew members must say goodbye to the patients they have bonded with over the last months. It was weird. Og skulle vi sige farvel til børnene, når de havde været exposed to, hvordan det kunne være under normale sådan forhold. It is especially hard for Johan Frisk and the nurses to say goodbye to Kim Ju Wan, who has been on the ship for so long, and they care a lot about him. Johann Frisk tries to get permission to adopt Kim, but fails, and they're forced to say goodbye. Frisk han var Kim fra Borger, og der stod et hav af sygeplejersker og stort tude, da de var Kim fra Borger. Og det var, det var jo altså Johann Frisk, der bare ham ned i båden og sejlede med op og afleverede ham op på det her øh, øh, lutheranske børnehjem. I said that uh, it's a paradise that I lost uh, in my life. The crew leaves Korea with mixed feelings. On the one hand, it's a relief to most of them who look forward to coming home. But on the other hand, it is hard to leave the country where thousands of civilians are still suffering. On the 16th of October, 1953, after a five-week voyage, Jutlandia finally comes back to Denmark, being greeted by more than 10,000 people. After 999 days serving the United Nations, the UN flag is removed and Jutlandia is yet again under Danish colours. 
The Minister for Foreign Affairs, H.C. Hansen, turns up, showing his respect and gratitude to the crew for their hard work in Korea. After the official reception and the gangway is clear, the moment everybody has been waiting for has arrived, the reunion with the families. Jutlandia's days as a hospital ship are over, but the success of the ship and the crew is much bigger than ever expected. Out of the 4,981 soldiers treated on Jutlandia, only 29 died. The official number of civilians treated by Jutlandia's crew is said to be 6,000, but in his report, Kai Hammerish estimates the number to be as much as three times higher. Jutlandia stays in EAC's service for the next 11 years until it is taken out of service in 1964. Between three and four million people lost their lives in the Korean War. Approximately two million were civilians. To this very day, there is a truce between North Korea and South Korea. The conflict is still unsolved. Today, Jutlandia is still remembered as a milestone for the Danish efforts in UN connections and especially for the beginning of a tradition of providing humanitarian support to the world's hotspots. After the end of the war, Kim Joo Won was reunited with his father. He started a family and settled down in Incheon. Kim Joo Won never heard from his sister since he waved goodbye to her. After the end of the war, Sheridan returned to the United States and settled down in California. He continued his career in the armed forces, got married, and had children. In Korea, Anna Marie fell in love with an American doctor. They settled down in California and had a son and three grandchildren.